This is Unit 3, Module 4, Session 3. This home connection is called Frankie's Fractions and Decimals. Um, we are to solve the following problems, and we are to use numbers, words, and sketches to show what we're thinking about. The first one says, Frankie's dad made scrambled eggs for the family's breakfast. He started with a full carton of 12 eggs. And uh, I think you know by now, if you've watched any of these videos, that I really enjoy drawing these out. So let me see, is what this? Let's see, that's, uh, wait, one, two, three, what's this? How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's my dozen eggs. That's my egg carton. Um, he started with a full carton of 12 eggs and he used eight of the eggs. So he used this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What fraction of the carton of eggs did he use? So we're saying, how much is this? And you can write at least two equivalent fractions. I find the best thing to do first is to figure out how many of the 12 eggs were used. Because the 12 would be your bottom number, twelfths, and the number of eggs that you used would be the top number. So we could say that would be 8 of the 12 eggs, 8 twelfths. Alternatively, we could break this into groups that we're very familiar with. Like if we, if you remember how you, to draw the strings or dra drape the strings over the egg carton, we can break the egg carton into sixths. So like this would be one sixth, this would be one sixth. So all of these, um, every two eggs is one sixth of the egg carton, which is why there are six of them, right? So. Um, so we used how many sixths? So if I shade them, like there's one, two, three, four. So you can say there are four sixths of the eggs used. You could go even further. Um, if you cut each of these numbers in half, it would be two thirds. Those are all acceptable answers. Um, I really highly encourage you to draw and to think about the strings that we used to break up the egg cartons, very helpful. Uh, Frankie, oh my goodness, this whole thing's about Frankie. He found a quarter on the sidewalk. What fraction of a dollar did Frankie find? He found a quarter. So he found a good old 25 cent piece on the floor, a quarter. Well, what fraction of one dollar is that? Well, 25 cents is how much of a dollar? Well, that would be 25 cents out of 100 cents, right? 100 pennies is a dollar. A quarter is worth 25 of them. That's 25 out of 100, 25 hundredths. Now, if you also think of the quarter as being parts of a dollar, we know that four of these equals one dollar, right? So if you only have one of them, you have one of four, or you'd say that you have one fourth of a dollar, or you could say you have one quarter of a dollar. That's why a fourth and a quarter are used um, interchangeably. So you could say 25 hundredths, you could say one fourth, they are the same answer. Um, and we know this is true because if I take four times 25, I get 100, and one times 25 is 25. So I have two fraction equivalents. Write the amount of money Frankie has found as a decimal. Well, think about dollars. If you think about however many dollars, dot, and how many cents, what would this be? What would one quarter be? It would be zero dollars, right, and 25 cents. There is my decimal. Frankie ate three-eighths of a granola bar. Her friend Pablo ate four-eighths of the granola bar. What fraction of the granola bar did they eat in all? Three-eighths that Frankie ate plus the four-eighths that Pablo ate. Combining them will give you the total of the total amount of the granola bar that they consumed. So three of eight pieces, four of eight pieces. Combine the three and the four, you get seven-eighths. Make sure you label it. Okay, uh, you'll notice I haven't been doing a great job labeling, but that is your job to make sure that you write seven eighths of the granola bar. How much of the granola bar is left? Originally, we had one granola bar, which would be eight eighths. 
but we ate, or we subtracted, 7 eighths. So how much is left if I subtract 7 from 8? I'm going to let you fill in this answer here. Pause this video if you need to. Write each fraction as an equivalent fraction with 100 in the denominator. So you could literally, maybe we should just go through and write 100 as the bottom number, the denominator in each answer. Uh, I'm going to zoom in to make this a little bit easier to see. But you can see in the first one, if you're working with tenths, you simply add a zero to get the answer. So let's do that. 10 becomes 100 by adding a zero. 2 becomes 20 by adding a zero. 10 becomes 100 by adding a zero. 6 becomes 60 by adding a zero. 10 becomes 100 by adding a zero. 9 becomes 90 by adding a zero. And I'm going to let you do the last one on your own. Don't be afraid to pause this video. Uh, we're going to do some addition or subtraction depending on what it says. I have two fourths, two fourths, one and three. Well, let's, let's write it out a little bit. If I combine the three plus one, I get four. If I do two fourths plus two fourths, I get four fourths. Wait, four fourths is the same as one. So I have four and one. What's four plus one? Five. Okay. Um, as I look at letter B, one fifth plus something equals three fifths. So I'm going to need something over 5. 1 plus what equals 5? Hopefully, 1 fifth plus 2 fifths equals 3 fifths. C says 4 tenths plus 23 hundredths equals something. Well, we can't combine these numbers right now because they don't match. But if you remember what we did up here, what do we do to tenths to make it hundredths? You add a zero. So I'm going to just sneak in here. Maybe I'll even write it in black. And I'm going to just sneak a little zero in here. 40 hundredths plus 23 hundredths is how many hundredths? 40 plus 23? 63. Sorry that that 3 looks so terrible, but that's supposed to say 63. Maybe I'll just rewrite it. Okay. I'm going to set up these bottom problems with you, but I'm going to let you answer them on your own. We cannot solve this because the denominators don't match. But based on my rule up here, if I'm looking at tenths, I can add a zero. And then when I solve, my answer will be over 100. Make sure you subtract. Okay? Pause this video if you need to. I have twelfths. I have twelfths. So my bottom number is fine. I can keep the twelfths. But I'm going to say 10 minus what is 4. I'm going to let you solve that on your own. F is very similar to C and D. These don't match. The denominators don't match, but I can make them match by adding a 0 to the 10 and the 5. And I'm going to let you do that subtraction on your own. Your denominator must stay the same. Uh, on this back page, if I can get my video in focus. Ooh, I didn't like that. Uh, tracking... Oh, man. Okay, let's try this button here. Okay, apparently I'm going to need to do, pull out all the, the bells and whistles to get this working again. Technology. Looking down, tracking, 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 tracking. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work here to get this camera going, I guess. Okay. How to focus? There we go. Frankie wrote this equation on her paper during math class. I didn't know Frankie was a girl until just now. One and two thirds equals three thirds plus two-thirds. Is Frankie's equation true? Well, it looks like she tried to break this number apart, didn't she? And I'm going to try to zoom in without coming out of focus, but let's think about this. What is number one? One is the same as what? If you want to break it into thirds, that would be three-thirds, isn't it? So one is three-thirds. 
so this part's good. And then is there a two-thirds and a two-thirds? Yes, there is. So I would um, agree. That equation is true. Write three more equations for one and two-thirds that are all true and all different. Use only fractions with a denominator of three in your equations. Here would be an example. I could say that one and two-thirds is the same as one plus one-third plus one-third because I kept the one, but I broke the two-thirds into one-third and one-third, okay? I could break up this one into three-thirds, and then I could say plus one-third plus one-third, or I could even break this up even further, and I'm going to let you decide an, a fraction equivalent equation where whatever you add up will equal this. I highly encourage you to break this number apart, okay? That will be very helpful. Frankie's teacher asked each of the students to cut a square grid out a square of grid paper any size they wanted. Frankie cut out a 10 by 10, that's what we have here, and her friend Lori cut out an 8 by 8, which is right next to it. The teacher then said, each grid you cut, no matter what size, has a value of 1. Please shade in exactly one-fourth of your grid. Here are the grids. Shade exactly one-fourth of each grid. Woo! So the teacher said, no matter what size you cut it, you can always shade in one-fourth. Well, right now I'm sort of thinking like this. If I think of one-fourth as maybe being a quadrant, right? Sometimes we're used to one-fourth maybe cutting up a square into bacon strips, which does work really well sometimes. But you could also shade it um, this way. But let's see if we can do this. Can I break these 10 columns into four equal groups? Well, the answer is no, because you can't take four times a whole number and get 10. So I think we're going to have to maybe shade this way. So maybe I'll go halfway up to the 5 and then halfway down, so maybe if I cut it, if I think about cutting it half top, half bottom, then I can shade in one fourth. That one's not too bad. A 10 by 10, we're, we're pretty used to that, okay? So that would be 25 out of the 100 squares. That is one fourth. But when I look at this eight by eight, Ooh, I might be able to do this a couple different ways. And I'm going to use two different colors of highlighter to show you. First, I'm going to go halfway up, four, draw a line, and then go across exactly halfway, four. And then I could shade in a quadrant and be perfectly done. But I could also... create four even bacon strips. I don't know why I call them bacon strips, but they're long and skinny. Maybe that's why. And I could shade in two columns, and that would also be one-fourth. So you're going to have to choose whether you would maybe do a fourth like this, or choose one, don't do both, or maybe you would sh shade in a quadrant fourth like this. If you count the number of squares, there would be 16 of them here. Guess what? There's 16 of them here, too. They are both the same number. They are both one-fourth. You choose. So, how many little squares did you shade in on Frankie's? Well, we already said that out of 100, 25 of the 100 squares is one-fourth. In Lori's grid, though, we just said that we did 16 of the, what is, 8 times 8 is 64 of the 64 squares. That's a 6, by the way. Sorry, oops, it's hard to read. That's supposed to say... 16 out of 64, okay? And then last but not least, it says, why did you need to shade in a different number of squares on each grid, even though you shaded in one-fourth on both of them? And you know what I would say? One-fourth refers to... Um, hey, what, what do you think? Breaking up, breaking something into four equal 
pieces. Okay. And then if you want it to be even fancier, you can say this. Depending on um, the size of the uh, thing, maybe I'll say that. Fourths can vary in size. I know that's kind of hard to see that, but how how can I how could I make this a little bit more obvious? Think about it this way. Um, I could think of maybe a little like maybe a a Reese's Pieces cup, right? Maybe this would be a Reese's chocolate peanut butter cup, okay? And then I would do this, we would say, is a pizza, okay? I can cut that into four equal pieces, and that is one-fourth. I can cut this into four equal pieces, and this is one-fourth. You know that a fourth of a little Reese's peanut butter cup is way smaller than a fourth of a pizza, right? So a fourth refers to cutting something into four pieces, equal pieces. It doesn't matter if something else is the same size or not. Okay, this was kind of an extended lesson, but I appreciate our time together. If you need help, ask a math wizard. Teachers love to help. Toodles!